So now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of chapter 10 and by looking at the structure of DNA. So DNA as a structure is a polymer, meaning that it has many parts. And more specifically, it can actually um, come in three different forms. Okay, so it can have structures at the primary level, the secondary level, and the tertiary level. So the primary level is where we're going to spend quite a bit of time and that is because we've really got to look at the main components that make up a DNA to understand why they act the way they act and why we get bonding the way we get bonding and um, so on. So the um, primary structure of DNA is going to be a polymer structure which is just a string of nucleotides that are going to be joined together and the the things that hold these nucleotides together is going to be phosphodiester linkages and they're actually going to hold these nucleotides together so don't get confused here but we're looking at the bonding that happens over here on the left hand side of this figure and then on the other strand of DNA on the right hand side of the figure. The red dotted bonding shown here in the center of the figure that's hydrogen bonding and that's not what we're talking about when we talk about phosphodiester bonds. So hydrogen bonds are a lot weaker whereas these phosphodiester bonds are very strong so they serve as the backbone of DNA. So a nucleotide is going to be made up of three main parts, a phosphate group, a base, and a sugar. Okay, And these three things together um, create a nucleotide. So if you guys want to, just underline T-I-D-E because we're going to get into some nomenclature a little bit later where we're going to be talking about nucleosides. And so nucleosides are different than nucleotides. So let's first examine the sugar that's associated with our transforming principle DNA. So sugar is going to come in a deoxyribo form for DNA and a ribose form for RNA. Okay, so deoxyribose and ribose. So uh, the sugar is actually a pentose sugar, which means it has five carbon atoms. And they're going to be numbered. I'm sure this is bringing back horrible chem chemistry memories for some of you. It's going to be numbered over here at the uh, prime carbon. Um, so carbon number one. And we're going to work around in a clockwise fashion to carbon number five. So when we look at the two main sugars here, we've got a big difference um, in the structures. It's not a big difference. It's actually a minor difference, but it's off of the two carbon. So the deoxyribose is missing a, an OH group off the two carbon. So the ribose has the OH group. Deoxyribose sugar does not have the OH group. And again, that's off the two prime carbon. So as we look at the nucleotides um, that are going to contain the nitrogenous base, there's two major types of nitrogenous bases. The, uh, the smaller word, but the bigger structure, and that's how I remember it, is the purines. And purines are going to be adenine and guanine, or A and G. The second type of nitrogenous base is a bigger word, but a smaller structure, and this is a pyrimidine. And the pyrimidines are going to be cytosine, thiamine, and uracil. So cytosine and thiamine are going to pair together, okay? Um, or sorry, no, they're not going to pair together. They're going to be like in structure, so that's C and T, and they're only going to be um, in DNA. In addition, cytosine is also going to be the uh, nitrogenous base that is going to be in RNA as well. But instead of thiamine in RNA, uracil actually replaces thiamine. 
So we're going to talk about that, especially when we get to chapter 13, is major differences between DNA and RNA. And this is one of those differences. So in RNA, we're going to see uracil show up. And in DNA, we're going to see thiamine show up. So as we look at the commonality between their structures, they're really quite similar. The only thing that's really missing is this um, CH3 group off of the number 5 carbon. So that is actually going to um, contribute to the poor stability of RNA. Okay, so just to review a little bit, um, let's talk first about purines in more depth, and then we'll talk about pyrimidines. So again, the way that I remember this, because they both start with P, so it's hard to remember, is that the shorter word is actually the bigger structure. So the shorter word is purine, and it's going to have a two ring structure and they're going to the two um, nucleotides are going to be adenine and guanine and as we look at the major differences between adenine and guanine we see quite a few of them start to show up okay so we've got um, off the number six carbon on the first ring we've got um, an NH2 group and then we've also got a double bond occurring between nitrogen and carbon as well so but for the most part these guys uh, adenine and guanine are going to be fairly similar because they do have the two ring structure switching gears let's uh, talk about pyrimidines so again the way that I think about pyrimidines is it's the longer word but it's a smaller structure and this is a single ring structure and again the um, nucleotides that are pyrimidines are cytosine, thiamine, and uracil. Thiamine is going to be present in DNA and uric uh, uracil is going to be present in RNA. Alright, so let's look at the um, third component of the DNA which is going to be the phosphate group. So I want you guys to notice one thing here as we look at this phosphate group and those of you that have been through upper division chemistries this is not going to be new news to you but we've got our phosphate in the center and then it's going to have a it's going to be double bonded to an oxygen and then the other oxygen bonds are going to be single bonds but they're those oxygens are going to carry negative charges so this is what makes dna negatively charged is the phosphate backbone backbone or the phosphate groups and that becomes very important when we get to lab analysis because we actually use charges to separate dna out into their molecular weights all right, so the first component, again, is going to be the sugar. The second component is going to be the nucleotide or the nucleotide base. And the third component is the phosphate group. Okay, so the, the three or the four um, different structures that actually occur in DNA are going to be deoxyadenosine, deoxyguanosine, deoxy um, th thymidine and deoxycytosine or cytidine. Okay, and they are their um, chemical name are all going to have five prime monophosphate off of the end of their um, the first part of their name. So as we look at these structures, our phosphate groups and our sugars are all the same. Where we get into differences is up here. This is the nucleotide up here. So we've got, again, our purines and then um, our pyrimidines. All right, so as we take a closer look at guanine and ad or adenosine and guanosine, um, we've got our phosphate group, our sugar, and our nucleotide. And our nucleotide is going to be specific to adenosine. So this is really the only thing that's changing in the structure as long as we're talking about DNA. And here's thymidine and cytidine. So deoxythymidine, deoxycytidine. And um, they, again, are going to be the pyrimidine structures. And so the only thing that's changing is these nucleotide bases up here, the phosphate group and the um, sugar are staying the same. All right, so the primary structure of DNA also entails um, 
the how these uh, structures are actually strung together. So we can see here that we've got a one strand of DNA that this is the sugar phosphate backbone that's going to be bonded to one another and then we've got um, to um, kind of hanging out there by itself we've got the nucleotides and they're going to be um, bonded via a hydrogen bond to the second strand of RNA. So this is why we get major differences between a DNA and RNA. So DNA is going to be double bonded and this is going to happen in an anti-parallel fashion which I'll explain in a minute and then RNA is going to be single bonded or a single strand. Alright, so um, DNA has got many, many, many nucleotides because it is double bonded and DNA is going to join the 5' prime phosphate group of one nucleotide. Okay, so and it's going to uh, bond to the 3' prime hydroxyl group of the next nucleotide. Okay, so we can actually see where this is. There's our 3' prime, and it's bonding to the 5'. Prime. Okay, so this 3'', three prime and 5' prime bonding is going to be very, very important. Okay, so and again, the bonds that we see holding the sugar and the phosphates together are phosphodiester bonds, which are very strong covalent bonds. All right, so I mentioned the uh, terminology anti-parallel just a few minutes ago. And so as we continue to look at the um, orientation of DNA, and now that we've talked about the five prime and the three prime ends, this is really what sets up the anti-parallel um, configuration. So one of the strands of DNA is going to be oriented in a five prime, there's the five prime, to the three prime direction, okay? And then the strand that is opposite it is going to be oriented in the opposite direction. Okay, so up here at the top, it's gonna to be oriented as the three prime, and down here at the bottom, it's gonna be the five prime. So anti-parallel means that they are uh, uh, both, uh, both parallel but in a different orientation so anti is where that is coming from so again five prime to three prime is going to be bonded to a strand that is oriented three prime to five prime and then our RNA is going to be oriented in a five prime to three prime fashion again but it doesn't have a second strand to help save stabilize it so this gives you the basis of the primary structure and we'll pick up with secondary structure in the next video.